This example, uh, you have a loop of wire in the shape of a rectangle, and it's a closed loop, and uh, this side is side length A, this side is length B, and the current is I, and it goes like this, and the loop exists in the YZ plane. So try and imagine this, I put the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis. The loop exists in the YZ plane, and the plane of the loop, and the magnetic field in the problem is uniform, and it's in the J direction. So we want to first calculate the force on the top side of the loop. So this is the top side of the loop. Remember, for any segment of wire, the way to get the force on it when the wire is in a when the wire is in a uniform magnetic field, we can use this rule where you the L1 is a vector that points from the beginning of the piece of wire that you're talking about to the end of the piece of the wire you're talking about. So the L1 vector is just the one that's drawn here. Now, what's the angle between this L1 vector and the magnetic field? The L1 vector points in the minus y direction, and the B points in the plus y direction. So the angle between them is 180 degrees. So what's the magnitude of the force then on this top segment of wire? It's I, L1, B, sine 180, and sine 180 is zero. So that means that the force on this top side of the wire is zero. Okay, let's calculate the force on the left side of the loop. So this is the left side of the loop, and the L2 vector now, it points from the beginning of that side to the end of that side, so it points down in the minus z direction. And how would we get the magnitude of the force on this side? The magnitude is just I, L2, B, sine of the angle between B and L2. L2 points in the minus z direction, and B points in the y direction, so the angle is 90 degrees sine 90 is 1, so you get just AB, because the length of L2 is just A. Okay, what about the direction of the force? Well, if you apply the cross product, the L2 points in the minus K hat direction, and B points in the J hat direction, when you get the cross product, you can show that it points in the I direction. So that means that the force F2 points in the I direction, it has this magnitude and this direction. Okay, what about the bottom, the force on the bottom side of the loop? Well, for the bottom side of the loop, if you want to get the force on the bottom only, you make the vector L3, which starts at the beginning of the part and ends at the end, and the L3 vector then points in the y direction, exactly in the same direction as the magnetic field. So the angle between them is zero. So when you get the magnitude of the force on this segment, it's I, L3, B, sine zero, and sine zero is zero, so you get zero force on this side. Okay, what about the right side of the loop? Well, for the right side of the loop, if you apply the rule, L4 now it should be a vector that points from the beginning of this side to the end of this side, so it points in the plus z direction. And if you want, what's the angle then between L4 and, the, and B? L4 points in the plus z direction and B points in the y direction, so the angle is 90 degrees. So the magnitude of the force then is I, L4, B, sine 90. Sine 90 is just 1, so you get I L4B. And what's the distance L4 equal to this length? It's just A. So I can write this as I. So that's the magnitude of the force on the side number 4. What about the direction of the force? Well, again, use the cross product. So what's the cross product between L4 and B? Put your fingers in the direction of L4 and curl towards B. You'll find that the cross product is in the minus I direction. And so the force as a vector, this is what it looks like. It has a value IAB and it points in the minus I direction. This is both forces at the same time. So there's no force on the top part. There's no force on the bottom part. The left part, the force is in the I direction. The right part, the force is in the minus I direction. And then what will happen then to this loop if you put it in this magnetic field it is that it will start to rotate. This is a simple demonstration. If you go to this MIT uh, YouTube uh, video, um, you can see that there's here a coil of wire here in this uh, piece of uh, circular part, and it makes a magnetic field. When the current passes through it, it makes a magnetic field along the axis of this circular part. And then they put another coil here, and they put another current in it, a different, a different current in this coil, and that's exactly the same as what we had. We had a, a region where you had a uniform magnetic field, 
these this wire is making the uniform magnetic field along the axis and then you put another loop of wire that has a current in it when you put that loop with the plane of the of the loop in the same direction as the magnetic field then there's going to be a, a force acting on the different sides of the loop and it'll start to rotate so you can watch this video in the at this link